Okay, guys, we're going to start tonight's lesson, and today we're going to learn how to solve systems algebraically using, there's a couple different methods. Today we're going to learn the one called using substitution, the one called substitution. So here we go. Our goal today is you will solve systems algebraically um, by using substitution and be able to identify what the three different types of solutions look like in algebraic form. Okay, so we found out while we were graphing that there's three different types, types of solutions for linear systems. I want you to know, want you to, we want you now to be able to find out what those forms look like algebraically when we solve. So there we go. Um, our QODE is, can you determine what type of solution a system of equations will have without solving? So we know that um, the three types of solu uh, solutions are it can have one point, it can have no solution when the lines are parallel, and it can have infinitely many solutions when it happens to be the same line. So we have our three solutions. So what we actually want to know in this question is, is there a way just to look at my equation and tell which one, which of the three um, solutions I'll have? Maybe we might have to manipulate the equation, one of them or, or both of them a little bit, but not actually having to solve them. Is there a way we can do that? So hopefully you'll be able to find out at the end of this lesson. And if not, you guys know there's, you guys know better than me, Google, Bing, all those search engines. Maybe you guys can find out that way, okay? Or you can talk, talk to each other, whatever you need to do. Okay. So we have four steps to solve um, linear systems using substitution. And the first one is, um, solve one equation for one of the variables, okay, step one. Step two is we uh, take that variable, what we just solved for, and we're going to substitute that answer into our other equation, okay. I know that this might be a little confusing right now, but I am going to go, when we go on, I'm going to show you the, um, the steps. And um, why we're not doing it on this page is there's just not enough room. I wanted to give you the steps and then we'll show you the steps and we'll run through the problem. Um, step three, substitute, I'm going to get an answer from step one, from step two. Once I get that answer, I'm going to take that answer and substitute it back into my first equation. Okay, remember I have two equations, so I'm going to substitute it back into my first equation. Okay, and then step three, I'm going to check my solution. Oh, my goodness. Step four, I'm going to check my solution. Okay. That's it, very simple. Three steps actually to the fourth step I'm checking. Okay, we know how to check already. So I'm going to solve, to reiterate, solve one equation for one of the variables. I'm going to take that, substitute it into the other equation, and then when I get an answer, I'm going to substitute that one back into my first equation. Okay, so here we go. Two equations, A and B. Again. Um, I can color code them this time, but since I'm not graphing, I'm not really too worried about color coding them. Although I am going to write in other color than white so it doesn't show, um, so it's not right next to each other. So I've got A and B. Okay. So I'm going to pick one of those equations and solve for one of the variables. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I will tell you if I solve A, if I choose A here, I can solve for Y because y is by itself. But if I decide to choose b, I would solve for x because 2 goes into both 4 and 8, right? So it doesn't matter which one I choose. And actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go against what I would normally choose. I would normally choose a because y is by itself. It's pretty easy, right? But this time I think I'm going to choose b just to be contrary, okay? so. B, 2x plus 4y equals 8. Now, you could solve for y if you wanted fractions. I don't want fractions, okay? I want whole numbers. So I am actually going to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 4y from both sides, and I get 2x equals negative 4y plus 8. Then I'm going to divide by 2, okay, and I get x equals negative 2y plus 
plus 4. So now I have an answer. That was step one. I chose one of my equations and solved for one of my variables. Now I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to substitute it. Just like in sport, when you're playing basketball and you need a break and, you know, you have a coach sends in a substitute for you, someone that, that substitutes in for you. They go in and they replace you. Same thing. He's just as good as you. And he goes in and he takes your place and you're substituted in. It's the same thing we're going to do. Only this time I'm going to substitute x, okay, because x equals. So my other equation, my other equation happens to be a, which is 3x minus y equals negative 9. So where if there's an x in my other equation, my x is higher and wants a break. So I'm going to take what x equals, which is negative 2y plus 4, and I am going to substitute it in to where there's an x. I'm taking this x out, and I'm putting this negative 2, 2y plus 4 in. So I get 3 times x, but my new x is negative 2y plus 4. And actually, you know what? Let's write that in a different color because it's a little easier to see because this is my yellow part, negative 2y plus 4. That's my substitute, right, for x. And then I'm just going to continue to write what y, uh, what my other equation is, the rest of it out. So now I have 3x minus y equals negative 9. Same equation, just substituted in. Notice now I only have y's in my equation, so I can solve for y. So here we go. Let's go ahead and solve. And since I have two equations together, here we go. 3 times negative 2y is negative 6y. 3 times 4 is 12. Then minus y equals negative 9. Subtract 12 from both sides. And I get, um, by my like terms, my like terms are negative 6y and minus y. If I put those together, I get negative 7y. And that's going to equal minus 21. Now I'm going to divide by negative 7. And y is going to equal 3. So if y is going to equal 3, I've got to realize that I'm going to have some sort of point, I think. So I'm going to put that where my y value goes. Okay? My third step, so I'm going to take my answer and I'm going to substitute it back into my other equation. Now, I could put it into the original equation. I could put it into here. But I've already got this equation solved for x, and that's what I want to find. So I might as well put it into this one. So here we go. So x is going to equal negative 2 times 3 plus 4. So it's negative 6 plus 4 equals negative 2. Okay? So now they want us to check it. We're going to check that. And we're just going to do it right up here. So 3 times, here we go, 3 times negative 2 minus 3 should equal negative 9. Well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Minus 3 equals, ooh, negative 9. Great. That one works. And then I have 2 times negative 2 plus 4 times 3, and that's got to equal 8. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 4, and 4 times 3 is 12, and 12, 4 minus negative 4 plus 12 is 8. It works for both equations. This is my answer right here. Okay? Not too terrible bad, just kind of, you know, i got to go here, here, here. But it's not bad. It's just all math you know how to do. You know how to solve for equations. You know how to substitute. That's all we're doing. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next one. Here we go. So I have x plus 3y equals 11 and 2x minus 5y equals 33. Now if I was to solve for my second equation, notice um, my coefficients are 2, negative 5, and 33. 
those are not multiples of each other, I would never choose the second equation because I'd have fractions. Now, I could work with fractions, but I know you guys don't want to. So what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to choose my first equation, x plus 3y equals 11. And I'm going to solve for x, subtract 3y. I'm going to get x equals negative 3y plus 11. Okay, now I'm going to take this, this part, and I'm going to substitute it in where my x is. Okay? So I have 2 times 2 times negative 3y plus 11 minus 5y equals 33. Okay? Great. So now what I'm going to do is just distribute and solve. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6y. 2 times 11 is 22. Minus 5y equals 33. Move my 22 to the other side by changing the sign and subtracting it. Combine my like terms, negative 6y and negative 5y. They're on the same side. That's negative 11y equals 11. Divide by negative 11, and y equals negative 1. Okay? Then I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to take this, my negative 1, and I'm going to plug it in right there. So I get negative 3 times negative 1 plus 11. 3 plus 11 equals 14. So my answer is 14 minus 1. Okay. Awesome. Very, very good. All right. I think I have at least one more. Okay. So here we go. Both of my equations are solved for an equation. So both of my equations are already solved for one of the variables. Yes, I'm getting tired and you guys can hear it. I'm a little crazy, but you already know that. So let's start with A. It says y equals 2x plus 2. So I'm going to take that and put it wherever in my other equation that there's a y. I'm going to put that right there. Okay, so that gives me 2x plus 2 equals negative 3x plus 4. Solve for x. I'm going to add 3x to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Okay, so I get 5x equals 2. Divide by 5. And x equals 2 fifths. Interesting. Okay. I wonder if I typed something wrong. Okay, we'll get a we'll get a good uh, a good fraction here. So we've got two fifths. So now it doesn't matter. Which one of the equations I choose to substitute in? Okay? But usually, I'm going to substitute back into this one. Isn't that what I've been doing? Taking the one that I plugged it out of, it uh, took and substituted in, plugging it back into that one. So I'm going to take y equals 2x plus 2, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to substitute it in where there's an x. So I'm going to get 2 times 2 fifths plus 2. So 2 times 2 fifths is 4 fifths plus, if I want this to be a fraction, I'm adding fractions, have to have the same denominator. This is 10 fifths. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So I still have a 2. And that equals 14 fifths. So my 
second, my y is 14 fifths. Awesome. Okay? Still fractions, still not that hard. You guys can do that. Okay? Awesome. So, no extra problems for you guys today. Yay, right? So I just want you to determine what type of solution, um, can you determine what type of solution a system of equations will have without solving? Notice all of our systems today have one answer. So you might have to do a little searching today. That's why you didn't have anything extra to do today. You might actually have to do a little bit of searching on your net to see if you can answer this question um, for this question of the day. You guys have a great night. Happy searching. I will talk to you tomorrow.